So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Sefcovic um, promising major changes around, or it's promising flexibilities around the Northern Ireland Protocol, so long as the UK um, promises to fully implement the uh, Northern Ireland Protocol. So I know what the headline is up here, confident about the chilled meats ban solutions. That's already happened. Um, I'm going to cover that at some point, I think. But the UK have basically extended the um, the ban on chilled meats. So is that the right phrase? Not extended, extended the grace period around chilled meats. You can tell how scripted this video is just off that alone. So the EU's um, chief negotiator says he's confident a solution can be found um, over a possible chilled meats, um, chilled meat products from GB being sold to NI. Um, that solution is a temporary one, as we know. About three months, I think September 1st is the new deadline. I'm not 100% sure. The, the the actual deadline date isn't that important. The important thing is the UK asked for an extension and the EU gave one, which is great, which shows some goodwill from both sides and the fact that both sides understand how toxic the situation is in Northern Ireland, especially with the marching season. So, product, so you know, the, the sausage wars have been delayed slightly. Products as a... Su Products such as chilled uh, sausages were due to be prohibited from Thursday. So that would have been, I think, last week. I'm going to say uh, either last week or today. Um, today, you know, recording of the video. Probably today, the day I've recorded this video. Just, you know, things are scheduled in advance, prepared. So the UK managed to get the extension. Um, Sefcovic said he had been in intensive contact with the European Parliament and EU member states in recent days about the UK's request. So, once again, that's interesting that, you know, these people are talking to each other, you know, everyone's in kind of communications with each other over um, the extension, and it was given. I don't think many countries had too much, too many issues with it. I think, I doubt too many EU members cared that much, because I don't think the UK can export chilled meats to, say, GV to France. I don't think we can do that. Northern Ireland's a special exemption, as, you know, Northern Ireland's in a very unique situation as is. So this is quite interesting, been intensive contact. Um, the UK didn't give a ton of notice time for the extension, for the request of the extension. So, you know, if you don't give people a lot of time, it can create problems. Safkovic said, I hope to be bringing such optimism to Northern Ireland more in the future. So that's interesting. So what he's saying is, you know, it echoes kind of his statements down here about being prepared to be more flexible around the Northern Ireland Protocol, which is interesting because I'm wondering where, which areas are they going to be flexible in? Because the EU does have a long-standing ban of ch on chilled meats from third countries, so that's you know that's not going to change. At least I don't think it's going to change. So where where do these flexibilities, where are they going to come from? That's that's the question I'm asking. Um, you know we've already seen kind of requests around medicines, so that could be one. Again, that's slightly tricky um, because you know the UK doesn't have the same you know med medical regulations now as the EU. Um, so yeah. Again, very, very strange and very interesting stuff here. What what are these flexibilities that um, Sefcovic is going to offer, you know, sort of the EU are going to offer with regard to Northern Ireland and the Northern Ireland Protocol? Strange stuff here. Um, Sefcovic repeated the EU's preference for a temporary Swiss-style veterinary agreement. I think this is a good idea. You know, this is the thing I'd want the UK to take. You know, Australia deal be damned. Um, this as a solution for Northern Ireland, where the UK continues to follow all EU agri-food rules. You know, this would mean we're not sovereign and blah, blah, blah. Um, the UK has previously rejected this proposal. The Iceman saying it would be an abrogation of sovereignty. I guess, you know, S Switzerland aren't sw sovereign then. Unlucky, Swiss people. Guess you ain't sovereign with your Toblerones and, and your mountains and your um, legalised guns. Guess you guys aren't sovereign over there, huh? So, you know, this would be an abrogation of sovereignty if it involved the rules being enforced through EU institutions. I mean, you could you could just be like, you know, we're boys and we have high standards, you know, the equivalency thing. But the UK, the EU won't give us that because we're playing fast and loose with um, trade deals. Analysis. So oddly enough, there's not a name to this analysis. Normally there's a name and a picture. So it's very odd from the BBC. Um, the article goes on to say there are clearly some within the EU who think that the UK government is not serious about maintaining the protocol. Absolutely 100% whoever in the EU has that perspective is 100% correct. I reckon there are people in the comments who also know that's 100% true. So Sefcovic was saying yes we want to be flexible but we also need to see goodwill um, and the implementation from your side which is what the EU have been saying probably since the start of the year they were saying look we can be flexible but you need to implement what you promised you would implement and then we'll go from there so this this statement here in orange is basically what the eu have been saying for about six months now 
Um, the person doing the analysis saying, I think the two sides are still quite far apart and what sort of flexibilities are required or are necessary to make the protocol work. I mean, to be fair, we know what's required to make the protocol work. It was agreed by the UK in 2019. So this kind of argument here, maybe this is the reason they didn't stick their name on it. It's not the best argument because we know what's required to make the protocol work. It's within the Northern Ireland protocol is to do checks on, you know, goods going from GB to NI. Um, you know, whatever's within the, the bounds of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Chilled meats can't go from GB to NI um, after the grace period. That's, you know, th th this point here is very stupid. That's all I'm going to say. Um, we, kn we know what's going to make the Northern Ireland Protocol work. It's the full implementation of the Northern Ireland Protocol. There are no negotiations here. Um, Economy Minister Paul Fru. This guy's a DUP guy. So I just googled him quick. So Paul Fru is a, a DUP politician in uh, Northern Ireland, serving as the Minister for Eco the Economy since 2021. So a fairly recent appointment, saying describing the protocol as damaging and brutal, even though it puts Northern Ireland in the most unique situation, which is that it's within two, um, two kind of. Uh, two markets really it's within the eu's um kind of single market for goods and it's uh, well it's not in the uk single market for goods for goods going from gb to ni but goods going from um ni to gb aren't checked so that puts northern ireland in a very unique situation of being able to export directly into the eu with no checks and also out to gb with no checks which is something that no kind of eu member state will be in the position of once the uk starts implementing checks on goods going coming from the eu to gb if we ever actually do that which i don't i don't know if that's ever going to actually happen given you know given how far behind we are on having customs officers customs agents and border facilities but that i digress at that point you know, he describes the uh the protocol as damaging and brutal okay I don't think it is, but damaging maybe, brutal not so much. I mean, if you want to be brutal, they could say we want 30% of goods being checked from going, 30% of goods going from GB to NI checked. They could say 40%. They don't. So this guy, Paul, uh, what's his name? Paul Fru. Um, told the assembly it was being used as a punishment and leverage by the EU for fur further negotiations with the UK. I mean, that's not true at all. If anything, it's working the opposite way around. The UK using uh, Northern, uh, Northern Ireland as a... Um, as, as a weapon against the EU saying that, oh, we're going to suspend Article 16, which puts the EU in a very awkward situation because that creates a backdoor into the EU single market. And that's what's put the EU on edge all the time. So if anything, you could argue that it's the UK that have actually used Northern Ireland as a weapon and as a leverage. Um, so yeah, hard disagree with Paul. Um, what's his name again? Paul Fru. Um, there have been some people here in the assembly who are complicit in that and ha that has really frustrated businesses um, you know businesses are looking for other other you know suppliers so it's not that bad um, well it won't be that bad I think in about two years time I've spoken to over a couple of uh, last couple of weeks I mean yeah some businesses especially the ones that um, are particularly reliant on British exports they're going to struggle but they will most likely find alternative supplies even if it costs them more and I I'll tell you what pal there are people complicit within the Westminster government, right? You know, the one that you see is so precious because you identify as being British, right? Who are also complicit in the Northern Ireland Protocol, who are also complicit in the so-called uh, brutal and damaging, um, brutal sort of brutality and damage is doing to Northern Ireland. If, if you know, if you're right here, you know, there is a there are people who allowed the allowed Northern Ireland to be used as leverage in negotiations. Can you guess? Can you guess who that is, pal? Because if you're right, if the Northern Ireland Protocol has done that much damage, then the people who agreed, you know, who negotiated came no, sorry came up with negotiate and agreed the Northern Ireland Protocol, they're the ones to blame here. Do, do you know who that is, pal? That's Boris Johnson and Lord Frost. Yeah, but you didn't know that, did you? Uh, pull through. So yeah, anyways, I think we're done with this article, but um, I haven't highlighted anything else. Point being is that um, Sefcovic has promised to be flexible with regards to the uh, Northern Ireland Protocol, which is good news. But the other issue is that um, you've got DUP guys talking nonsense. Um, you know, Sefcovic, I'm not going to lie, was pretty brave going in front of the lines then like that because they could ask him all sorts of stupid questions. Um, but yeah. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, the channel's on Patreon. If you can support on there, that would be great. Um, if not, just like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.